Shabbat Shalom, everyone. This week in the Torah, we read a double portion, the portions of Achrimot and Kedoshim. Achrimot literally means after death. Kedoshim, the Hebrew word for holy. These uh, two portions take on a new meaning for me this week. For it was this week that my 99-year-old aunt, Aunt Rosie, passed away and was buried. And as I thought about after her death, all the things that she did in the world, and especially for her family, the last remaining person of my parents' generation in my family, it made me realize after her death, all of the righteous, compassionate, caring, and wonderful things that she did, not only for her own children, but for her nieces and nephews like me after we had lost our parents. So I look at this portion in, with different eyes this week. There's a mysterious yet evocative sound of the titles of this double portion that when uttered together hints at this relationship between darkness and luminescence. It reveals a tension between two dimensions of the human experience our potential for fallibility and distance from the divine and our potential for virtue and closeness to the divine. The opening passages of these two portions accentuate this provocative dissonance. Achremot begins, Adonai spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron when they drew too close to the presence of God and died. God said to Moses, Tell your brother Aaron that he is not to come at will into the shrine behind the curtain in front of the cover that is upon the ark, lest he die, for I appear in the cloud over the cover. We immediately confront death tied to a realization that we are not godlike. In contrast, the portion of Kedoshim opens, God spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the whole Israelite community and say to them, you shall be holy, for I, the Lord, am holy. Helping us to understand that indeed we can be holy like the divine. These portrayals of humanity seem utterly contradictory, but from the depths of these contradictions, there emerges a clear path of personal growth. When we open ourselves to darkness, when we honestly look upon mortality, suffering, failure in ourselves and in our world, we can then elevate ourselves to higher planes. Achremot, after death, Kedoshim, holy. In Achremot, a main focus of this portion is on Yom Kippur. It beckons us to face the existential truth of our mortality and our estrangement from the divine. The very concept of this annual day of atonement exposes us to sobering mirrors. It reminds us that we quite helplessly slip into carelessness, corruption, and insensitivity, separating us further from the divine. We are commanded to practice self-denial on Yom Kippur on this day. And our consequent waves of humbling hunger remind us just how human and how near to death we are, even in the wearing of white the color of the burial shroud. Friends, when we fail to respond to suffering in the world, when we do not help people who are in dire straits, our estrangement from the divine increases. According to Jewish law, we are obligated to help people in danger whenever we are aware of their predicament. In our age of globalization, when so much information is literally at our fingertips, we cannot plead ignorance. As long as we squander $20 bills that could otherwise purchase enough food to feed a family for six months in Ethiopia, in Africa, or flocks of chicks or goats in Cameroon, we are guilty. As long as starvation, persecution, and death from preventable diseases around in, uh, that abound in our world, still exist and we do nothing to help eradicate them, we are not entirely blameless. When we bury our hand, heads 
We bury our heads in the sand in order to avoid feelings of responsibility. We are nonetheless responsible for these acts of omission. Our destructive acts of commission are an even more serious matter. When we increase global injustice through our actions or our inactions, for example, as long as we buy coffee, clothes, electronics from companies in the third world that exploit workers, we are personally culpable. When we speak or behave in ways that undermine women, the LGBTQ community, the financially disadvantaged, or any other marginalized people, we feed the forces of oppression in the world. The portion of Akhre Mot forcefully directs our consciousness to the fact that we will inevitably mess up over and over again, obscuring the divine in our lives. This disturbing reality is why the practice of Yom Kippur is considered a chukat olam, a law for all time, for all the world. We are only human. To face this complicated truth is tantamount to facing death itself. Yet these two portions remind us that human culpability is just the beginning, beginning of a sacred journey. Achremot, after death, kedoshim, holy. The Torah teaches that we, despite our inadequacies, indeed have the capacity to be holy. Although holiness is difficult for us to conceptualize, the portion of kedoshim suggests that it has everything to do with righteousness, justice, and generosity. We are commanded to be honest in our dealings to feed the poor and to treat disempowered people with dignity. Coming on the heels of the portion of Ahura Imot's discussion of Yom Kippur, the portion of Kedoshim suggests that serious introspection can stimulate ethical and spiritual growth. The inspiring view of humanity in the portion of Kedoshim is not an alternative per se to the disillusioning view in the portion of Ahura Imot. This pair of paradigms reflects an evolution of our nature and potential. To embrace both modes of being is to evolve into stronger global citizens, better human beings, more godlike. We will indeed sin. We will miss the mark. We distance ourselves from the divine. And yet we are always given the opportunity, in fact, the duty to try and rise above our human flaws. It's a blessing that we read these two portions together this year, for it empowers us to be mindful of our weaknesses, our deleterious tendencies, and our dark places within. And from there, to better ourselves, to seek the light, to come ever closer to the divine, to holiness, to being holy. I offer these thoughts in memory of my beloved departed Auntie Rosie. Shabbat Shalom.